Hello everybody, my name is Whistle Wang. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're gonna to go to a Chinese hospital. Yes, we did this last year. The response, the feedback, the comments were really, really good. So we're going again today. I should say, I also need to go to the hospital. I'm in the midst of a hay fever crisis. I know it doesn't sound too bad, but my eyes, my nose, my throat, all feeling horrible. It's hay fever season here in Sichuan, Chengdu. Today, we're going to Huaxi Hospital, which is the largest hospital, not just in Chengdu, in Sichuan, but in all of Western China. So people from neighboring provinces, including Guizhou and Yunnan, and especially Tibet, come here to see doctors and get medical attention. Um, as I said, the biggest hospital, the busiest hospital in all of Western China. Uh, on average, I think 20,000 people a day uh, come to see doctors here. That doesn't include all the inpatient care, all the operations and so on. This is just 20,000 people a day coming to see doctors. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, by the way, I haven't got a hospital card today because uh, from last year, the change has been everything has gone electronic. So I should have a hospital card with my details, my records basically on my phone. How I'm going to record that and record this video, I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, we're taking the Chengdu Metro to Huaxi Hospital. Let's go. It's 9.30 a.m. in the morning here, Friday morning. Although rush hour's over, it's still pretty busy, as you can see. We're on line two, we go up to line one, and then we're gonna to go to the Huaxi Hospital, dedicated metro station, and then walk to the hospital from there. Right, we've just got out of the metro at the Huaxi Hospital stop. And what I find quite interesting is because we're near the city centre, so you can see there's quite a few tall skyscrapers and more if you go in that, that direction. And um, at the very entrance, well, as you get off the metro, is in fact not the normal or the general hospital, but it's the uh, dental hospital here because Huaxi has also got an incredible dental hospital, famous throughout China. So many people graduated from this dental hospital. And it's interesting, I just saw this statue. Uh, the founder of Chinese dentistry, I guess, uh, stomatology, am I pronouncing that right? Sorry, guys. Dr. Ashley Woodward, Woodward Lindsay from Canada. So you've got all these sort of modern skyscrapers and then you've got this sort of, now it's a museum. Um, so a bit of the Huaxi Hospital and the Huaxi uh, Dental School uh, that was founded here many, many years ago. So yeah, uh, the dental school is really, really famous. People from all over China come here to study dentistry. And then when they graduate, go all around China and perhaps the world to practice dentistry. And then we're going in this direction for about 10 minutes to get to the general hospital, the one I talked about earlier, uh, the, at least most people in Western China. No, in fact, everyone in China has heard of this hospital. If not for the hospital itself, then certainly for the dental school. And then people, patients, people who need to see doctors, come, I think, from all over Western China. Um, and what's quite interesting as well, from the metro stop walking in this direction, you see a lot of people holding those sort of plastic bags. And inside them are their X-rays or MRIs or CTs or whatever they have. Um, because if you guys remember from my last uh, hospital video I did, uh, you go to a hospital, um, you see a doctor, a doctor immediately sends you for whatever scans you need, and then you have those scans, and then you go, go back to see the doctor and show the scans. Uh, whereas in Britain, that might be sort of weeks apart. In China, that's hours apart. I mean, if you're unlucky and you hit a lunch break or the end of day's work, say five, six o'clock, then you've got to return the next day. And that's why you see people carrying those plastic bags full of CT, MRI, or X-ray scans. Anyway, walking, it's a lovely day. Although not if you suffer from hay fever. Uh, five minute walk to the hospital. Let's go. Guys, did you just see the people on the street handing out cards and shouting in Chinese, guahao, guahao, guahao? Do you know what that means? 
Well, basically, they are scalpers, but not for sort of entertainment tickets. They're scalpers for hospital appointments. Now, in years gone by, that was really, really popular. Remember, you needed a physical card. You needed to go, often queue up, get a hospital appointment, a doctor's appointment, not necessarily at the time you wanted, because again, it's one of the busiest, ho no, it is the busiest hospital in Western China, a daily intake of 20,000 people just to see doctors. Um, so those scalpers basically sending hospital appointments really, really popular, and they still are today. Why still today, when pretty much everyone has gone electronic and has gone on their phones and the physical cards are almost gone? Well, because remember what I said earlier, People from as far as Tibet, and now Tibet is a huge, huge province in China. So if they've come all the way here, and by the way, this street around the hospital is full of uh, hotels for two reasons. One, the people accompanying patients that are staying in the hospital, uh, because there's another thing about Chinese hospitals. If inpatient care, if you had an operation, if you're staying in the hospital, nurses, unlike Britain, don't care for you in terms of uh, how can I put this? How you go to the toilet, preparing, getting food for you and so on and so forth. They, they only help with the medical side of things. So you need either a relative, a friend or to employ someone. Chinese people are very practical in this sense to help you prepare your food, change your bed pad, etc, etc. Anyway, I'm veering off course. I'm talking about those scalpers. Yeah, so uh, they're still really, really popular. Why? Because if you travel, let's say, for example, all the way from Tibet and you've planned to come here for a day or two uh, and you go up and queue yourself for a hospital appointment, a doctor's appointment, and the closest one or the soonest one uh, is, uh, you know, in five days time. Well, you probably spent a lot of time and money to get here. You're going to go to a scalper, pay a lot more. Uh, but probably get to see a doctor today or tomorrow. To give you an example, uh, yeah, uh, Chinese doctors, or the way the hospital works here is, there are different levels of doctors, literally different GBA levels. And so the higher the level, um, I don't know what that means, is that experience or qualifications, the more expensive that doctor will be. Um, <clears throat> so you'll, you'll pay in that sense. And the same with the scalpers. So let's say an average doctor, yeah, hug a sip in, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, you'll uh, you'll you'll pay for the doctor, and a normal doctor will say cost maybe. 20, 40 RMB, I'm not sure what that is in pounds, maybe five, six pounds, but a scalper's ticket will cost maybe 200 RMB. So that's gonna be nearer what, 20, 23, 24 pounds. So quite a big difference in price, but uh, in that way, you'll be able to see a doctor fairly, fairly quickly. All right, we're almost at the hostel, let's go in. There's a lot of people here, really is a huge amount of people. Uh, I imagine if this is the first time you've been here, it can be rather intimidating. A lot of people, where do you go? I think this hospital's got five, six, seven floors here, many different departments. So if you're fresh from Tibet, from Guizhou, from Yunnan, from a smaller town here in Sichuan, you come to this hospital, you've probably never seen something quite like this. And if you're feeling sick on top of that, then, oh gosh, I can imagine coming here by yourself, as I've done in the past, it's horrible. Luckily for me, I've been here many, many times, and although I'm really struggling with hay fever at the moment, it's not a life or death, and I know where to go because I've been there before. But imagine that, coming here sick for the first time, and then on top of that, guys, if you're an international person, you don't speak or read Chinese, yeah, it's gonna be tough. All I would say is people here, on the whole, are super, super friendly and helpful, and doctors and nurses, high level of education, so English tends to be really, really good. Still gonna be difficult, but uh, if you do need to come to a Chinese hospital, bear with it, ask for help. And even though there are a lot of people, people do tend to be friendly and help out. Oh my God, that's people getting either medicine or paying for treatment. So there's so many people. Let me turn the camera around. I'm in a waiting area for the place I wanna to go to. I'm not gonna wait. I go to a special department just for the allergies. Um, these people want to see a doctor. I'm going to try and bypass the doctor, go straight for the allergy shop. Hopefully it will work. Yeah. 
So I've made it to the allergy room. It's super, super busy. This is allergy season. People are getting upset. I can totally understand it. When you're not feeling well, I'm waiting. Hopefully they're gonna get me the medicine and then I can have the shot, hopefully. I'm gonna turn the camera around. I don't know if I'm allowed to film in here. People seem friendly. So there isn't all, but hopefully it's okay. All right, we're good. I've just left the allergy center. That small room is the allergy center. Uh, and I've been given this, which is basically my ticket, my prescription. I almost forgot English, guys. I've been in China for too long. My prescription. So I'm going to get two shots, two injections of whatever this is. Uh, by the way, everyone, take your medicine seriously. Don't say what I just said, whatever this is. I've been taking this for years. And when I get the box, I'll know what it is and I'll, I'll be able to check. But honestly, I can read Chinese, but I can read uh, type Chinese or eligible Chinese. You know, I can't read this sort of joined up handwriting. Hello? Yeah, I, I told you a lot of Tibetans here. Um, so um, anyway, off to get my medicine. This is a funny one. So this isn't normal in Chinese hospitals. Normally in Chinese hospitals, you get your medicine within the hospital. There's a pharmacy within the hospital. This is special especially for me this is special imported uh, medicine uh, for this type of allergy i basically got really bad hay fever so i'm going to go across the road to get the medicine i don't know why it's like this you guys can put in the comments below why you think it's like this um i've got to go across the road get the medicine and then come back quickly because it's got to be stored at a, at a cold temperature i know all this because i've done it for the last few years go get the medicine come back they'll uh, get it ready for me and then have the injection anyway got the prescription let's go get the medicine it's gonna cost me a load of money uh... do you see all these behind me these sort of counters that's where most people are getting their medicine from um, so you you pay over there there are various places to pay you pay over there and then you get your medicine from there, we're on the ground floor of the hostel. As I've already said, I've got the special medicine, so I'm off across the road. Um, but yeah, if it was normal medicine, you'd get it here. Anyway, go. So you see the banks there? You've got the Construction Bank of China and the Industrial Bank of China. I think maybe number two and number three is the biggest banks in China, right up there. Hospitals in China, like many countries, are big business. I believe this is a public hospital, uh, private hospitals. There's a province, Xiamen, in southeast China. There's a town there called Putian, I believe it's called Putian. In the 80s and 90s, a load of private hospitals uh, came out of that town, as in people from that town, from Fujian, Putian, opened up private hospitals all around China. I don't think they're doing too well at the moment, but this hospital, I believe, is a public hospital. No, it definitely is a public hospital, and yet still big business in terms of banking and finance and money um you know when i talk about prices and this medicine is expensive but i remember in the last episode i did um check it out if you guys haven't seen it alone in a chinese hospital what am i going to call this episode i've already done alone in a chinese hospital two people in a chinese hospital um you know people were surprised at the prices in the last episode of the last hospital um video uh, being really quite cheap and i suppose if you compare that to a lot of countries uh, namely america um then it then it is but you, what you've got to remember you know chengdu the city is quite a you know a affluent place uh, but sichuan the province isn't really that rich wealthy and tibet isn't either and so for a lot of people spend 20 30 rmb on a hospital visit is fine but if you're going with the scalpers you've got 200 rmb then you've got to buy medicine then you've got to pay for scans ct scans mri scans mris are expensive x-rays are a little bit cheaper um, and then you need the medicine see the doctor get the scans perhaps you need to stay in hospital or for heaven forbid you need an operation that costs a lot of money. Now, the social security system here, which uh, covers a lot of medical care, doesn't cover 100%. And it's a strange system in that it's, um, it's aligned with where you live, where your hukou is. And the hukou system is basically where you're born or where you have a house, I should say, really. Uh, that's more important. Uh, and so, you know, if you're from out of town, then you're probably gonna get 
less of the medical expenses covered. And even if you're from Chengdu and you go to a Chengdu hospital, depending on the treatment you, you require and get, you're not going to get it 100% covered. It might be 70%, might be 80%, might be even less. Depends on the illness and, and the uh, medicine. And of course, you know, that money isn't infinite. It's finite. Um, and so if you're in a real medical problem, you're going to use a lot of that money and then you're going to have to delve into your own pockets on top of already the 30 or 40% that you're going to have to pay. So yeah, anyway, we've come across the road. So I'm at this pharmacy come hostel. I only know this because I've done this the last three years. If I hadn't been here, if I had no experience of this, I would be lost like I was the first time. But anyway, we're now going to try and pay for this medicine. Let's try. Oh do you see that behind me? That's a fraud warning, you know, don't commit fraud. It's been big business here uh, with the Shobao card, with the National Insurance and Medical card. You know, people who didn't need medicine would pay for people who did need medicine and in a way extract the money. So that used to be a way of doing it. Um, right now, of course, in the last couple of years, everything's on WeChat and Alipay. Uh, payment methods are a bit harder. In fact, I'm actually going to try and use a credit card to pay for this medicine. It's going to cost me about, I don't know, three, four hundred pounds. Not sure what that is. Four or five hundred dollars, probably around three thousand RMB. So I'm going to try and pay with a credit card to see if I'm successful. Um, I'm guessing they're going to want me to pay on WeChat, Alipay, which will be annoying. Find out in a second. <laughs> Success, and I paid with a credit card, very happy. Uh, now I'm going to over here, so pay over there, come around here. This is a much smaller pharmacy and get the medicine. Can you, ma? Good power. Right, we have the medicine. You see that, guys? This is from Novartis. Got two packs. I guess one pack, one injection, and an ice pack there as well to keep it cold. Now we go back across the road, literally across the road. I'll show you guys. So there's the pharmacy, and there's the hospital. So back across the road, and across the road, maybe a bit dangerous. I think it's a red light, naughty guys. Remember guys, cross at the green light. It's very important. When the green man shows, cross the road. When the red man, don't cross, it's dangerous. So anyway, we've got the medicine, we're going back to get the injection. I've delivered the medicine. Uh, it's taken out of the fridge, so they say it's gonna take about half an hour to prepare. They need to, I don't know, warm it up, if that's the thing. Uh, so I'm now in the waiting area. Got babies crying. That's normal. They're probably sick and not feeling very well. So I'm going to try and find a place to sit, which is difficult. It's pretty crowded. Uh, wait for half an hour. Oh, there's seats there. Wait for half an hour. They'll call my name, and I'll get the um, I'll get the injections. But I made a rookie mistake today, guys. I've worn a shirt rather than a t-shirt. Uh, it's going to be both shoulders. So I think they're going to see a bit of cleavage later. My mistake. And their fortune, I guess. <laughs> not really. Nobody wants to see my cleavage. First injection done, time for the second injection. Next year I'm definitely wearing a t-shirt. We're out of the hostel, we're done. We're out of Huaxi Hostel, West China Hostel, the biggest and the busiest in Western China, in Chengdu, Sichuan. All in all, spent about 2,400 RMB, 2,300 for the injections, for the medicine, and then 98 Kwai to administer uh, the injections. So about 2,400, about 300 pounds, not sure what that is in dollars, 400 or so. I left my place after nine o'clock in the morning, got here just before 10 o'clock, it's now 11.30, so all in all, taking me about an hour and a half, and that included waiting 40 minutes uh, for them to prepare the medicine, me going across the road to the pharmacy, so really, really quick. Whatever you want to say about Chinese hostels, they are efficient. Um, guys, that's me. That's a wrap uh, from Mr. Wang here in Chengdu, Sichuan. Bye-bye. Oh, remember to like and subscribe. Please do so. It really helps the channel. And let me know what kind of videos you want in the future. No, that really is a wrap. Bye-bye, guys. Say ciao.